Hi, everybody. Welcome to the audio version of the CE Update, uh, Trainings, Events, and Hopeful Visions from the Northern New York Library Network. I'm Lydia Willoughby, and I am recording this outdoors on July 20th. It's a Thursday, um, so this audio thing is for you. If you haven't read it yet, you don't care to, or you just want some background noise. Um, so as a top of the header update, just please complete the annual member survey and invite other staff to complete it too. Our annual member survey is up um, on the website and also in the newsletter. You have time to watch less than 60 second video clips from Cultural Humility, our annual meeting 2023 with Lori Townsend, David Hurley, and Sarah Kostelecki at the University of New Mexico. Some of the quotes from these short videos include that power structures favor your perspective, the more invisible they are to you, and the harder it is to see any negative. So, yeah. Humility means admitting we aren't perfect. This involves an ability to acknowledge one's mistakes, imperfections, gaps in knowledge, and limitations. Being aware that we can't get things wrong isn't admitting we're terrible, but just that we are human beings. And I, this is an amendment and annotation um, and the original um, servicing, like the history of culture humility as a concept uh, came from, um, there's a definition of it in an article called Cultural Humility, Measuring Openness to Culturally Diverse Clients in the Journal of Counseling Psychology from 2013. Um, and that definition says that cultural humility is an interpersonal stance that is other oriented rather than self focused, characterized by respect and lack of superiority toward an individual's cultural background and experience. Okay, moving on, August 7th, y'all gotta save the date. Um, Archives and Architecture Spotlight at Historic Saranac Lake. Uh, we're gonna be meeting. Um, both in person for a behind the scenes tour of the construction just after it begins. So we'll get to see some hopeful visions of the future. Um, and then it's a hybrid event because we're also going to be doing um, a uh, discussion virtually with the architects and design team. Um, this is a really fascinating project at Historic Saranac Lake uh, where they are sort of like transforming a campus into uh, one museum that combines uh, public history, public health, um, community history. Um, the new building has a lot of accessibility features, an integrated science lab, um, and there is also um, a collaboration with the indigenous Haudenosaunee people for the presentation of um, cultural heritage throughout history into the present day. Um, this is going to be a really fascinating event. Um, I think it's deeply relevant to all kinds of institutions, not, mu not just museums and archives. And the real interest and focus here is like uh, both like the intersection and overlappingness of accessibility um, in spaces, both historically as a TB cure space, but also as a current space for, um, you know, just diverse people with the different ability levels. Um, Monday, we had our July 17th community outdoors event at Paul Smith's. Um, it was really, really great and wonderful. And thank you so much to Andy. Um, Kelly at the Paul Smith's library for giving us a tour. It's a really beautiful, special place. Um, we definitely got to see some very rare uh, plant species and um, I'm excited for year round um, experiences in one specific place based thing. Um, they do uh, cross country skiing there in the winter. That looks really easy and cool. But in general, we just had like really wonderful conversations um, about how the network um, and how we as a you know group of people working together can share our resources for the community. It was really cool. So next up, Ask the Lawyer, Ask the Lawyer with Stephanie Cole Adams, um, who goes by Cole. Um, so what is Ask the Lawyer? Um, it focuses on issues pertinent to libraries, including copyright, labor laws, safety plans, unions, employee rights, and most recently, book challenges. Um, and I guess it's not just books, it's just um, any material. But um, there's a link in the newsletter to a resource guide um, of recently asked questions for the Ask a Lawyer, uh, which is a service of the Western New York Library uh, Council. Um, did you know that you can filter the uh, Ask a Lawyer recently asked questions database by the tags found um, on the right hand side of the database page? Um, you can view all of that stuff here. 
Um, and just know that there are recordings of past, past Ask the Lawyer webinars. If you want to go back and see something um, that's been addressed in the past, you can do so. Most of the recently asked questions um, had a lot to do. There was a question about union business, about how much time you can um, be doing union activities on the clock and supervisor kind of like negotiating of that timeshare. I think the spoiler alert is that um, you can't really limit like union activity because it has to be reasonable. But they go into more detail with these questions. I'm not a lawyer, but this uh, definitely has information about labor laws. There's also questions about privacy and employee rights. Um, and a question that came up at the Community Outdoors event and I've heard echoed uh, speaking with school librarians everywhere is just asking questions about book challenges and Cole had a really interesting perspective um, about uh, employee rights um, as one kind of like legal recourse uh, to that. Um, next up, I want to highlight a database that Nylon subscribes to uh, in order to give you full access to peer-reviewed scholarly articles in the information profession. Uh, it's called Informed Librarian Online, and it is a service that um, it, it has a legacy of coming from Table of Contents, Concierge Reader Services, like dossier kits you might get in a legal office. So this is a practice that is definitely adapted and amended from legal librarianship. Um, and uh, it's just a really great service. The Informed Librarian Search, um, Informed Librarian Online Search um, allows you to search um, over almost 400,000 different documents in a number of different um, disciplines and journals. I can say that the Informed Librarian Online has a richer um, area of coverage of full text journals available to you um, richer than um, lista which is a subject specific guide a lot of um, academic libraries use um, yeah but the informed librarian online it actually is like a really great database service and um, i'll definitely be working more in the coming months to highlight it for you um, and this month in the newsletter, I highlighted an article that was accessible through Informed Librarian Online about the effects of gratifications, flow, and satisfaction on the usage of live streaming services. Um, so it's basically a peer-reviewed study about if you're streaming an event online, like how do you create community and sustain it? And the answer is that uh, they recommend streamers organize periodic parties or contests um, build solid relationships with their users. Um, and it's really just um, a, an article about joyous programming and thinking about making stuff fun. Uh, and I think that that's relevant uh, for all pedagogical, like teaching learning experiences. Um, you know, just bringing the party to it. Uh, I also highlight some upcoming webinars uh, for libraries and museums. Um, one of them is on August 2nd. It's from the ALA, American Library Associations. Um, they have an engagement grant. Um, and this one is on Black Maternal Health Equity, Building a Platform for Advocacy and Community Engagement at Unique NYC Colleges. Um, and there's another one coming up on August 4th. Um, it's from the Long Island Library Resource Council on the Culturally Competent Manager, Leadership and Team Building Skill Sets. Um, and one more that I highlighted for you coming up September 4th, um, it's from Dipsney, um, and it's called Anti-Racist Approaches to Collections Accessibility. Um, all of these topics and issues from webinars, I think, uh, are relevant in a teaching and, and description and access perspective. Okay, so then the last part of this CE update, I am recommending some newsletters uh, from the region um, and from our practice uh, that you might want to follow. Um, one is the St. Regis Mohawk uh, Tribal Newsletter. Um, it's a really wonderful newsletter, just has regular job postings, community events, public service announcements. Um, I love their Break for Turtles ad. And sometimes they really do link to uh, deeply uh, important uh, information that changes your perspective on boundaries and borders like they have a trauma-informed um, survivor and repair support um, 
link um, to the Survivor Secretariat um, that was established in 2021 to organize and support and uncover, document, and share the truth about what happened at the Mohawk Institute, um, which operated for over 140 plus years um, and was, um, you know, uh, anyways, you can read more about that <laughs> in the newsletter. Um, the next newsletter uh, that I really think you definitely want to subscribe to is the New York State Archives local government newspaper. Um, so this is really like an interesting connection uh, when I think about the town of the village of Potsdam specifically, like the, the local government like physically connects the public museum and the public library. So um, it's interesting to keep up with what they're following. Um, and it has extensive links for procedural documentation of how to destroy and keep records. Um, it's got legal updates, um, a best practice for schools that just came out from New York State from the Department of Education. That's called creating a safe, supportive, and affirming school environment for transgender and gender expansive students. Um, and it also had a really sweet um, little RIP of an office cat named Hank. Um, that publication really slaps. Um, the next one, which you may already subscribe to, is the DEC Delivers. The Department of Environmental Conservation in New York um, has an email service um, that will send you uh, regular updates on the air quality every day in New York State. But you can also subscribe to specific ones about amphibian migration, um, or you can report harmful alga, alga blooms. <laughs> harmful algal blooms. All right, and the last one I think that y'all might want to know about is the Feminist Center for Creative Works newsletter. Um, they have really rich color, exploratory fonts, a really participatory design. Um, I can't think of an organization that I think does a better job at annotating and defining its core values as a community-based practice, and the, the design and printing of their stuff is always super interesting. I signed up for a webinar that they're offering for free on how to write an artist statement um, and can create a compelling and empowering narrative about your work, um, which I think is really important. Thank you so much for listening to this. Yeah, have a wonderful day.